Chris Parry, welcome to my three minute hit on Amped Ventures. Uh, Amped is AMPD on your tickers. And look, I, if you've been listening to me for a long time, I've talked about these guys a bunch, right? I go back with them years. Uh, first met the CEO in a Dungeons and Dragons game. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a nerd. Uh, but he's an interesting cat. We started talking, we found out that we had a lot in common. And uh, this dude's company was really interesting. At the time, it was all about uh, fat uh, pipes and servers for high performance computing. So, remember back in the Bitcoin era when Bitcoin ate dust and everyone with a Bitcoin miner said, oh, well, we're going to switch to rendering video for animators. <laughs> None of them did because you don't just do that overnight, right? Disney's not going to come and trust you with the next $100 million tent pole just because you have a Bitcoin miner in a, in a shack in Upper Schenectady, New York. So, who did do business with all the animators? Amped. And in doing so, they proved out their business model, right? They've got themselves a, a good handful of clients that are like high profile, but unfortunately for them, stock-wise, don't allow their company name to be put out in news releases that might propel valuations. So they're out there quietly doing business every year, increasing their revenue. The revenue's doubled from the same period last year in the most recent financials. Uh, but that's a very sort of like ticky tacky one client at a time business, right? So you can't go out there and make a massive public, public company out of going out and spending six months at a time trying to get companies to do business with you that won't let you use their name to promote yourself. So Amped comes along with something that they think is actually better. And that is, why don't we give them not just the picks, but the picks and shovels. And so you might not know this unless you're actually in the film industry, but uh, there's a, a movement afoot called virtual film production right now that is changing the way movies are made. It used to be you wanted to build a Star Wars movie, you had to put about, uh, get a bunch of studios, get a bunch of carpenters, build a bunch of sets, shoot for one day with a green screen and, a, and actors pretending that they could see the monsters and starships behind them, and then you break all that down, throw it all away, and start again with some other scene. Uh, and in six months' time, your effect guys say, oh, did you shoot from this angle? Because we really needed it from this angle. And then you got to go back and build it again and shoot again and spend a bunch of money and, or, or use what you got, which isn't always ideal. So why would you do this uh, the same way you did it in 1932? The film industry has finally figured out that instead of green screens, they can use LED screens. Now, if I can show you a little bit of footage here uh, that will show you maybe what that's about, this is virtual film production, right? Where instead of building a scene, you build a screen. You build that screen all the way around your performances. This is a guy who does a thing. And what you see in the background is essentially video game engine footage. Here's this guy again who does some stuff. Um, so you don't actually have to build anything. You build the screens and then you show what you want to show behind, which then moves as the camera moves. Right, so you don't have to necessarily show all the screen all the time. You, wherever the camera is moving, that's what's being shown on the screen. The actors can look behind them and see what they're supposed to be standing in instead of having to guess to it, right? If they have a big green dragon that's going to destroy them, they can see the big green dragon. If the director needs it to be red, the guys with the computers tap a few things and it becomes red. This is the way film production works now. So it's a very quicker very much less expensive, much less travel needed uh, way of doing things. And this is now, if you have a virtual film production studio, it is booked 24 seven and it costs a lot of money. And you know what else it takes? It takes bandwidth. You require the servers to be sitting around here, sucking up all these visuals, making the movie go on the fly. You don't just do that with laptops. You need an actual high performance computing setup, the likes of which Amped actually has created and sells. So while these guys are out there filming all this luxurious fantasticness of other worlds, they're infrequently, in, in, at least in Vancouver, in the virtual film production studio recently put together in East Van, um, they're using Amped technology. Right? So Amped doesn't have to say, hey, in six months when you're editing this, think of us, it says, oh, you're shooting this tomorrow? Well, you know, what are you gonna do for computers? Roll in our unit and away they go, right? So Ant has become essentially 
a film production house, or at least part of a film production house. So what does this mean in the long term? Well, it means that they've got the picks in the servers, now they've got the shovels in the mobile server units and trucks and fiber optic pipes and whatever else they need at the pointy end of things, right? You actually, uh, rather than saying, you know, we can help you with your video render, the video render is now at the beginning of the process rather than at the end of the process. And the ability to be there on, on site, on point, allows them to do work with, to be introduced to, to do business with much many more large production houses than they would have just been with a website in the Salesforce saying, hey everybody, can we, can we help you? So this is a big step up, and one that has come with zero recognition from the public markets because it's complicated. And as you can see, this is a three minute hit. I'm into the six minute now. That's why it takes a little time to tell this story. But there's another part of this story that's just breaking. And for that, you're gonna have to come back here next week because we're gonna do some video footage of the volumetric capture studio, the departure lounge that is built and functioning on Great Northern Way in Vancouver, uh, the, uh, the tech hub of the city. Uh, these guys have built the thing that will throw virtual film production into the year yeah, we used to do that. Now we're talking volumetric capture. If you don't know what volumetric capture means, it means that we're filming not just one camera, but a thousand cameras, 400 cameras, 100 cameras, whatever you want. All these high definition cameras filming from different angles, but also measuring distance. So that when the data is put together in the AMP server farms, it can process where people are in the space, which means you're not just showing a flat image or a 3D image where two cameras are filming at once and trying to fool your eyes, but an actual walkaboutable image where you can be filmed from this angle and this angle and this angle and this angle and this angle. And this and so what is the end result of that? It means when you put it all together, you can create virtual and augmented reality worlds where you're not just watching a band playing your favorite song. You can put on the headset and you can walk around your band playing your favorite song. You can interact in that space. You can sit behind the drummer and watch what they're doing. Or you can stand in the crowd and see the, the, the view from the middle. Or you can be up on stage singing with the singer. That's one use. Now imagine sports. ESPN for years has been throwing as many cameras as they can around a court so as that anyone watching on ESPN can switch if they have the right technology from viewpoint to viewpoint to viewpoint. I can sit here, I can sit there, I can sit above it all, etc, etc. But that's just switching cameras, right? That isn't taking all the data from that game and letting me stand between the Raptors forward and the Raptors center as the pass goes between my legs right next level shit so how much money can come out of that well that's again a thing that is difficult to put a lasso around because they've just opened the studio they've just put the big opening party together they've just gone to SIGGRAPH and shocked the tech world with what they're able to do it's the biggest as I understand it volumetric capture studio period and the amount of money that gets charged for use of one of these studios 15 minutes of footage costs you around 85 grand and takes about three days to process and film and put together. So a music video for 85 grand, it's not outside the realms of normality, but it's very, very specific tech that is going to be more and more frequent as the metaverse sets itself upon us. So, uh, you know, Mr. Zuckerberg thinks we're all gonna sit at our desks and go to a virtual meeting and have a funky little animatronic avatar of ourselves instead of a Zoom call. All right, well, when you do that, how are you gonna do it? How are you gonna make that work for you? If I'm gonna be in a 3D space that I can move around in, do I do that by, with my webcam or do I need to go somewhere and set up a proper volumetric capture? I'm not gonna say that every Zoom call is gonna be volumetric in 2026, but I am gonna say that if you're working in the metaverse and 3D, 360 degree VR tech is required, it ain't gonna happen with a home unit. AMP is onto something very big right here and the revenue that is gonna come from this is just starting to creak through the door. They're just starting to factor in all three of these elements into a place where not only do they have multiple revenue streams that have significant upside, 
but one feeds the next. The volumetric capture, where does it send all the data? Amped. The, the uh, virtual movie production, where does all that film footage and video game footage come to? Amped, right? They're creating the baseline, and then they're rather than going out and selling it one at a time, they're building industries, cutting edge technology industries, where they are the customer of themselves. It's wah. Man, this stock has gone eh, uh, eh, uh, for the last two years. And I've been there for every second of that ride. And every time I think to myself, oh, it's been a long time. I've got opportunities and other things. Maybe I should flog a little bit of this amped. I can't do it because I know what they're building. I see what's happening. And God, tell me if I'm wrong, but I honestly think that this next quarter is the quarter where things began to get proved. I feel like the numbers that are going to start coming in are going to make people take notice. I've been telling you for a long time that this thing is legit. They're not just sitting there doing VR pretensy projects with off-the-shelf software. They're not out there doing some pretend Pokemon Go shit and claiming that it's the next thing in, in, in technology. These guys and the guys at Versus, another one of our clients, VERS, go look at them, are doing real metaverse stuff without all the promotion. It's like the real moving parts. Versus is a whole different thing. It's corporate metaverse. This is entertainment metaverse. The two of them do not have a Venn diagram that connects in any way, shape or form, other than the fact that they're in areas the market doesn't yet really understand. But if you love what Versus is doing, Amped is right there with them. And if you think what Amped is doing is interesting, Versus should be something you also have a look at. These two companies I'm happy to represent, I'm happy to have investments in, because every time you hear the word metaverse, you're hearing bullshit surrounding it. It's, it's, it's like reaching for a fucking life raft and everybody's just throwing bullshit in over the top. You, the number of companies that claim they're in AI because they have a script that takes data in and spits data out is will boggle your mind. Real AI requires massive investments in bandwidth and server space and the ability to do something with that, with that data. You can, you can have a data on everybody and where they are at any point in time all across the world. What are you gonna do with it? You need to process it. You need to actually use that data in a way that makes sense. And in order to do that, you don't just pull it all in, you've gotta process it, and that is tough business. Amped is in that business of making that processing happen. Versus is in the business of taking bits and pieces of that data and elegantly using them in a way that helps businesses make sense of them. Two great companies, VRS, AMPD. I ad admonish you, if you haven't yet looked at both of them, please go do so right now. I realize this is a 12 minute, three minute hit, but go fuck yourself, I can do what I want. Oh, by the way, subscribe.